Chapter 6, Lesson 5 of Advanced Algebra, and we want to do a few examples where we apply the rational zeros theorem that we've been talking about. And as a review, the rational zero theorem allows me to make a list of possible rational zeros by using the factors of the constant and then the factors of the leading coefficient. And in doing so, it gives me a list of possible rational zeros. And then I can find out what those rational zeros are by applying the remainder theorem, which says I can substitute values in for x, and that will tell me what the remainder is going to be if I were to divide uh, by that zero. So we're going to use both of those theorems then as we look at these few problems to help us determine not only what the possible zeros are for the function, but then also what uh, those rational zeros will be. Now keep in mind, what we'll be finding are only the rational zeros. We're not going to be finding, whoops, didn't mean to do that. We're not going to be finding all of the zeros. We're just going to be finding, oh, what in the world's going on here? We're not going to be finding or determining all of the zeros. We're simply going to be finding the zeros that are rational. There are, or could be, other zeros, which we'll talk about with the other theorems and how to determine the irrational and then imaginary zeros if there are any. So uh, a couple things to review then. I know I just said that, but I'm going to repeat myself one more time so you understand what I'm saying, hopefully. The rational zero theorem allows us to make a list of possible rational zeros. We then can apply the remainder theorem, substituting the values in for x to determine what the remainder is going to be when I divide by that zero. And you remember, if we have a remainder of zero, then that zero is a factor. If we hit a remainder that's not zero, then that number is not a zero. So we'll be able to determine what the possible zeros are, and then we'll also be able to determine what the possible, uh, not only what the possible rational zeros are, but what the actual rational zeros are by using that remainder theorem. And then again, we're not necessarily finding all of the zeros. We're only finding the rational ones. There could be irrational ones and imaginary ones, but we'll figure out how to do that in the next coming lessons. Next coming lessons. That's kind of redundant. Okay, so let's go ahead and do number... Um, I'm going to do number two first. So number one looks a little challenging to start off with. So we're going to look at number two first. So in order to list the possibles, all right, so my possible zeros, I take the factors of my constant. So here my constant is 1. Let me narrow this up a little bit. And the only factors of 1 is 1. And then I take the factors of my leading coefficient, which are 1 and 2. Again, factors are numbers that I multiply together to get 2. All right, so now to make my list... I take the first number over the first number, and it's going to be plus or minus 1. That's two possible zeros. And then 1 over 2 plus or minus 1 half, those are two more zeros. So if this polynomial has zeros that are rational, it must be one of these four numbers. Now I can apply the rational zeros, or the remainder theorem, excuse me, and I can substitute each one of these values in for x, and I can tell then by whatever number I get what the remainder is going to be if I were to divide these out. So let me go ahead and write these in here real quick. And then I will give you a shortcut or remind you of a shortcut that you could use. All right. In order to figure this out, man, that one looks kind of messy. Let me do that one again. Try to go a little fast here because I'm running out of things to say. Uh, while I'm writing all this down, but we're almost there, and here we are. Okay, so I take each one of these numbers, and the remainder theorem says that if I simplify these, this is going to tell me what the remainder will be if I were to divide by this number. So 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2, all right? And then negative 3 times 1 is negative 3 plus 1. So 2 plus 1 minus 3 is 0. So this is a 0. So a zero of the function, one of the zeros of the function, is indeed the number one. So then I'll do the next one. So negative one squared is one times two is two. Negative three minus three times minus three is a positive three plus one. This is an answer of seven, so this one is not a zero of the function. So negative one is not a zero. So then I can do two, uh, a half squared is a fourth. 
and 2 times a fourth would be 1 half. So 1 half minus 3 times that is 3 half plus 1, well, I'm going to change that to halves because we're all halves here. So 1 half and 2 halves is 3 halves minus 3 halves. So I get a remainder of 0. So positive 1 half is also a 0 of my function. And then I can do this last one. So this is going to be a positive 1 fourth times 2. So that's going to be a half again. This is going to be a positive then 3 halves. And this is going to be 1 half. So this is not going to add up. This is 3, 4, 5 halves. So the remainder here is not 0. So this is not a 0 of the function. So using the rational zeros, I get my possible rational zeros, OK, by using the rational zeros theorem. And then using the remainder theorem, I can determine what the zeros will be if there are any rationals. So the number 1 and the number 1 half are the rational zeros. All right, so let's go ahead and do a few more examples so you kind of get the idea of what we're going to be doing here. And actually, let's go ahead and do number one. So again, one thing I didn't mention, but we should always keep in the back of the mind, is we want to make sure this is in standard form because it's very important that we get the factors of the leading coefficient. So if it's not in standard form, I'm going to be taking factors of something that's not the leading coefficient. That's going to lead me down the wrong path. So just kind of remember that. Okay, so to state the possible rational zeros, the first thing I do is I take the factors of the constant, which is 3. So that's 1 and 3, and I put them over the factors of 21. Now, the negative sign doesn't matter because they're all plus or minus anyway. So we have 1, 3, 7, and 21. Those are the factors of this uh, leading coefficient. So now to make my list... I'm going to take plus or minus, and I put each number in the numerator over each number in the denominator. So 1 over 1 would be plus or minus 1. And then 1 over 3 would be plus or minus 1 third. And then 1 over 7 would be plus or minus uh, 1 seventh. And then 1 over 21 would be plus or minus 1 over 21. And then I need to put 3 over 1, so that's plus or minus 3. 3 over 3, which is 1, I already have that number, so I don't need to do that again. Then 3 over 7 is plus or minus 3 sevenths. And then 3 over 21, which reduces to 1 seventh, which I already have, so I don't need to list that again. So this would be a list of all my possible rational zeros. So again, if this polynomial has rational zeros, it must be one of these numbers in this list. So now to find the rational zeros, if there are any, I need to substitute each one of these numbers into this expression and see which one comes out to be an answer of zero. All right, now I'm going to do that on my calculator and uh, I'm going to do it <laughs> with the video stopped and then come back and tell you what they are. But real quickly, just as a reminder, if you have the 84 calculator, you can take the number, so I'll take the first one, number one, take number one, and you can store it as the x value. So I can do one, store it as the x, and enter. And then all I have to do is enter in the expression. So uh, negative 21 x to the fourth. Whoops, uh, I did that wrong, so let me do that. Uh, negative 21 uh, x to the fourth. And then I have plus uh, 46 x cubed, uh, cubed, plus 98 x squared. Uh, plus 34x, plus 3, and if I enter that in, that will give me a value of when I substitute in, in uh, the number 1, and then does not give me a number 0, it gives me 9,666, so the number 1 is not a rational 0. Now, to do the next one, I'll do one more real quickly and show you how you can do it quickly on your calculator. I need to change my x value, so I want to put negative 1, and I must store that as x and then enter, and then I can go back up to my equation that I already entered, uh, scroll up and enter it, brings it back down and enter again, and that will give me the next number, and so I can do it pretty quickly that way. Okay, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to pause the video, and then I'll come back. I'll tell you what the answer is, but you can do that on your own and see what you can get, all right? Okay, once we've done all that, actually I did, uh, figured out that I had actually done something wrong on the first one. I put in 98 squared rather than 98x squared. So negative 1 actually ends up being a 0, and then negative 1 7th is a 0. Now again, these are only the rational zeros. 
is not necessarily all of the zeros. But if the uh, polynomial had zeros that were rational, they must come from this list. And by using the remainder theorem, I was able to figure out what these are without actually having to go through and synthetically divide every single problem. Okay. So again, I'll do a couple more where we list them and we'll look at the potential zeros uh, from that list and then we'll determine what they are by applying the remainder theorem. All right, for number three here, I see we're in standard form, so I'm okay. So to list my possible rational zeros, I need the factors of the constant, four, which are one, two, and four, and then the factors of the leading coefficient, which are one and two. So to make my list, I put 1 over 1 and then 1 over 2 and then 2 over 1 so that's uh, 2 and then 2 over 2 which is 1 I already have that 4 over 1 and then 4 over 2 which is 2 so I already have that so my possible rational zeros must come from this list if I have rational zeros it must be these now in order to determine out what the uh, in order to determine which one of these actually are zeros, I apply the remainder theorem. And again, I just substitute these values into the expression, and that's going to give me my list. So again, I'm not going to do this on uh, the video for you. You can do it on your calculator first, and then check your answer, but then come back and, and see what the answer actually is. So using the remainder theorem, we determine that 1 half ends up having a remainder of 0. The number 1 has a remainder of 0. And then negative 4 also has a remainder of 0. So these three are the zeros of this polynomial, or are the rational zeros of this polynomial. All right, we'll do one more, and then uh, that will wrap this up. So in this example here, we are in standard form, so we're okay. So in order to list the possibles, I need the factors of the constant, which are 1 and 3, over the factors of the leading coefficient, 1 and 5, and now I can make my list. So 1 over 1, plus or minus 1, 1 over 5, plus or minus 1 fifth, uh, 3 over 1, plus or minus 3, and then 3 over 5, plus or minus 3 fifths. So I have then my list of possible rational zeros using the rational zeros theorem. Now using the remainder theorem, I can substitute these values into the expression and determine which one of these are actually uh, zeros or rational zeros of the function. Now if you did that on your own, hopefully you did and didn't just wait for me, but that's all right if you did, it ends up that none of these work in this expression. None of them give me a remainder at zero, which means in this case there are no rational zeros. Now again, this doesn't mean that there are no zeros, it just means that there are no rational zeros. So the zeros that are are either irrational numbers or they're imaginary. And again, we'll talk about in the coming lessons. All right, so then to sum that up or to just, uh, again, tie everything together, the rational zeros theorems allows me to make a list of possible rational zeros, and then I can use the remainder theorem to determine what the uh, which numbers out of that list are actual zeros of that polynomial. And again, this does not give me all of the zeros in any way. It just gives me the rational zeros, and it is a step towards finding all the zeros. But uh, just understand that it, it is not a way to get all of the zeros in any way. It's just a way to begin down the road of determining all the zeros of a polynomial, and we start by figuring out which ones are going to be rational. Those are the easiest ones to figure out first. In the next lessons, and the next videos, we'll figure out how to go further now and get those imaginary zeros and those irrational zeros uh, moving forward.